Oh, this, this the thing that's on there. This the thing that's It's the trick, guys. The trick. I had a feeling it was the tricky ones. Okay. <laughs> well, Tina, that was three years ago. I've grown three years older. <laughs> well, yes. It's another very important birthday coming up. Yeah. Is it important for you? Yes, very. And turning 50? Turning 50. And looking good. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, last time you told us about the hard times. I did? You, yeah, you did, <laughs> with Ike. And the fact that you, you wrote the autobiography about all the beatings and everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to talk about that, but I, I want to know what does it mean to have the power to share these things with others? Oh, that's a spinner. What does it mean to share it? I didn't mean to share it. I simply was tired of talking about it, mm. and I needed to say it once more, a final time, in order to stop talking about it. I had to let the people know it wasn't, mentally, I didn't think of sharing it. I thought of, take this material, look at what my life was, and stop talking to me about my past. That was basically what I was, the statement that I was trying to make. Mm. Because you live an extremely uh, public, uh, so, so to say, life. Yeah. And can you, can you have any privacy? Uh, very little these days. <laughs> I tell someone something once, that's it. When I was growing up, you heard a song on the radio, and you saw a picture of the star, and that was it. Mm. Today, you know what color every organ is, you know what time they go to bed, you know, you know everything. I mean, you just totally get exploited. It's, it's a bit ridiculous these days, I mm. think. You just have no privacy. And if you alienate yourself from it, then you get a bad reputation and the press can sort of put you down. So you, you have no, you, there's no way to win. But what has this life taught you? <laughs> Endurance. <laughs> 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 well, I've learned a lot. I've learned patience. I've learned not to worry so much. Try to worry not so much about what the people say about you because you compare what they say about everybody mm. and you live just very truthful within your own your own life. What you, if you can wake up in the morning with a clear conscience and smile, first waking up without even the cup of coffee, you're all right with yourself. And then let the world go because you can't stop it by trying to correct every little thing that's said about you. You know, mm. that's one of the things I've learned, and that's something I live by now. And I, I wake up uh, in pretty good moods. Mm. You live in Europe, but what in Europe attracts a southern girl like you, a southern ah, girl? <laughs> don't you know it's Europe? Oh, Europe, Europe for Americans is a fantasy land. Mm. It's, it's, it's so far away, it's, it's mysterious. And most of the times when Americans travel here, they don't lose it. There's something about it that's old, but yet, yet always new. There's something about, there's something about old period. It, it's, it has depth because it's been around so long and it's, there's always generations of, um, of ideas that's still moving its way, threading its way through some kind of way. So it's, it's almost untouchable, the magic that Europe holds. And I've been coming for, since 1966 and it's still when I'm, when I'm arriving, it has something there still that's right, you know. So mm. I decided, well, why don't I go and live there and just see what I'm feeling? Because you never know. As long as you go and come, you'll never really find out. But once you go and you live and you learn to speak some of the language and you're really there is when you can really decide, yes, all of those feelings are real. I do feel good there. I will stay here, etc. Mm. So that, that's my attitude about Europe. That's why I came. I figure, okay next half of my life, why don't I try it? Why don't I go and see? There's nothing stopping me. My family is fine. My, my sons are grown up. Bettina, I hear you practicing gardening sometimes outside <laughs> Cologne. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, Frau Turner? You have big ears. <laughs> yes, I do a bit of gardening there, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're an American living in Europe, practicing Buddhism. Yeah. You're kind of an ideal world citizen. Maybe I can teach someone something. Huh? Mm. <laughs> I'm, uh, yes. Do you think Western civilization lacks spirit? I don't want to really speak about... Um, it's very difficult for one like me to speak about uh, these kind of negative sides of, of life and of countries and people. I just feel like if I'd like, how I want to live my life. And I, it doesn't matter where I live it as long as I'm happy there and, and living it. Like what you say is I am an American, I am Europe, 
I'm living in Europe and I'm practicing Buddhism. If that's what I want to do, I don't pass judgment on anyone. I just feel that this is what I'm comfortable with doing. And if I can do it and remain happy, that's what I'd like to do. And that's what I make a reality at the moment. In this show, Caramba, we've talked a lot about racism today. What are your feelings about racism, Tina? What? Racism. Well, what do you want me to say? Whatever. Well, I think um, races are growing. People are becoming more enlightened as the years go on. The world itself, moving into the year 2000, will be all kinds of changes. People are fighting for rights. They're getting rights. I think one way or another, some type of destruction, whether it's uh, <sighs> destruction coming from a spiritual side or from the, the universe itself that will make changes, it's a long way off. But I foresee some kind of peace for the land. I do, because it's, it's been so much problems for so long that it either gets very bad and then good comes. Usually there's, after a storm, there's always the good. So, I mean, the storm is really quite heavy at the moment. And I think that good is coming somewhere. Maybe it's the year 2000 and right into it. But I foresee some, some type of calmness coming mm. with the generations and races and, and everything coming together some kind of way. It was very nice having you. When are you coming back? <laughs> <laughs> I am coming back. I think it's May. And my manager said that well, I should tell May? you where I'm playing. <laughs> you have a new hall here called the... Um, Globen. The, this is the glo yes, the Globen. Globen. That's right. You're coming to Globen. Yes, I am. In May. That's good. We don't want to lose you, Tina. The stage is yours. It's just for you. All right. <laughs>
Det var allt, ni får inte vara med längre. Nej, men nästa lördag kommer vi tillbaka nästa lördag, nästa lördag, ja. Okej, nu ska jag fest. Ett fyrfalligt lever för Tina, hon okay, lever. Hip, hip. Hurra, 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 Yeah. <laughs> There. It's for me. Oh my god. What does that mean? Huh? Oh, what? Well, uh, yeah. Part. Try some cake? Do you know what that means in Swedish? What? That you're not gonna get married. This to turn it over? <laughs> but it's only oh, this right. year. It's only this year. Yes. What? Yeah. This year's gone. Yes. Ah! <laughs>